Uh, we are now in the process of building this aquaponic system. Uh, today I went and bought my IPC totes. Uh, we're going to have six grow beds, two fish tanks, and then I'm going to use the other tanks for some other things as well. What I want to do is just talk about preparation. Um, we have to prepare the grow beds and everything uh, first. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, the framework around these IBC totes. So to make the grow beds, we need the IBC tote, the top of it, 14 inches, and then you fill it up with media, like rock or lava rock or whatever you choose to do. Uh, you fill it up 12 inches. So what I've measured, you know, there's different sizes of IBC totes, so you've got to kind of plan this out. Um, since we're going to make six grow beds, we're going to use three of these IBC totes to make the grow beds. So if I measure from here to here, it's an uh, exact, um, I can't remember exactly, it was like uh, 12, 12 inches. So I'm going to cut right here, and then we'll have you know roughly about two inches beyond that, and we're going to flip this upside down. So what I've done is uh, I was thinking about using a sawzall, but it just seemed like it was a little bit more cumbersome. So what I did is I went and purchased some bolt cutters, and I did some tests on another one. And if you just get a nice clean, uh, you know, cut here, it really works out really nice. As you can see, bring the camera. Down. As you can see, it cuts really nice, and you don't have to worry about the the actual sawzall. So it's a really nice cut. It makes it easy, makes it fast, and you don't have to worry about cutting the plastic either. Because um, obviously, you don't want to cut the plastic. Okay, um, in the previous video, we talked about uh, removing the center section of this uh, IBC tote framework, because what we're going to do is we're going to make an actual grow bed out of this section and out of this section, and we're going to eliminate the center. So, um, as I showed you, I used a bolt cutters to cut this. Um, I have a sawzall, it, it would work, but you'd have to be consciously concerned about always uh, cutting the plastic. The bolt cutters was a great investment, it was easy, uh, and we were able to get this done quite quickly. So, um, I cut out the center of the IBC tote. Uh, now what I've done is I took a straight edge and brought it out over and measured down. And so I want my grow bed to be 14 inches tall. Okay, as you guys can see, that uh, we have now cut all tops and bottoms. Uh, they are roughly 14 inches high. So now the thing that we're gonna do now is take all these, wash them out with soap. Um, the, the key is obviously, if you get used IBC totes, you have to make sure that whatever product they had in there was non-toxic over here. So everything's been washed with soap, cleaned out, rinsed, and now we're ready to go ahead and start putting everything together. Uh, and then then uh, we'll talk more about how the plumbing and everything uh, goes together. Okay, now that we've washed all the tanks, it's time to go ahead and put uh, everything in place. One thing that I want to caution everybody is, is you have to methodically think this out because if you don't, you're just going to throw some tanks in and, and, and then you're gonna decide that's not where you wanted it. Uh, before we even put it, got to this place, we actually put everything setting on the ground, positioned it, uh, we looked at it, we analyzed it, and we even had to shift and move it. Uh, we put stakes in the ground, uh, ran string, and everything to make sure that everything's in place where we wanted it. So now that you can see that we uh, determined where everything's going to be, we've, uh, um, actually put everything on a foundation now. So as you can see, these are the grow beds. Uh, I put all the bottoms of the IBC totes in one row, and then I put all the tops in another row. It doesn't look like it, but they are the same depth. Uh, it's just because of the bottom of the IBC tote. When you're dealing with uh, the top of the IBC tote, and you cut that and you flip it over to make a um, uh, grow bed out of it, uh, obviously you've got to make sure that you seal these uh, caps really well. What I do is um, I use some Teflon tape. I put that around the threads there. Uh, and then there is a rubber gasket inside this cap right here. And then you have this middle uh, uh, cap as well. So I Teflon tape around that. But also this is a, actually a vent. So make sure you score some like 100% silicone in there as well. So installing the uh, bell siphons. And so as you can see, um, here is 
a bulkhead connector. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting them in the corner. I'm doing this strategically, uh, the way I'm going to design this, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Some people, you know, like to put their siphons like in the center and so forth, but obviously we're dealing with other uh, issues as well. So I'm really comfortable about putting uh, my bell siphons over here. So as you saw, a bulk connector there. Uh, this right here is a three-quarter inch pipe, and I've got it measured to the top from the from the floor to the top, 11 inches. So that gives me one inch in my grow bed as far as a dry area, and then. Um, from the floor to the top of the edge here, this is 14 inches, so I should have another two inches of, of nothing there. Uh, so this should work out really good. Here's a siphon right here. As you can see, um, I used a four, four inch pipe. Um, I cut a series of lines in here. I watched a video um, how it's nice to have these lines. So when you get roots uh, in there, you can just simply twist that and because of the lines, they'll actually cut the roots. So, um, so like I said, I just cut a series of lines with my chop saw. Here's a cap. I drilled a hole in the top of the cap. So there's that right there. And then um, what I what I did is I, I uh, watched a gentleman that he is incorporating a cap at the bottom. And then what happens is is uh, because of as the water comes up and down, this will help stop the siphon um, a little bit better. So uh, he feels like this is a better design. Now, uh, the methodology behind all this is, obviously this is your water line, uh, water height right here. Uh, I've gone 11 inches from the bottom on up and then one inch um, uh, grow bed material above that. So that'll be dry to avoid any algae uh, uh, growing in your bed and so forth. So this is a three quarter inch pipe here. Um, a lot of people talk about you don't have to seal anything or anything like that, but I did do that, meaning seal like uh, put Teflon tape, things like that. I did myself. Um, I just like doing things like that, so put a little bit of extra work in that. Um, and then, then, then they say that you should double. So this is three quarter inch, so this is an inch and a half pipe. So if you do an inch uh, pipe, you should do a two inch pipe. So uh, you just double what what you uh, use as far as for your standpipe. Um, so this is an inch and a half material. This is a bell cap. Uh, so basically, as I set this down, the top of this pipe comes to the very bottom of this right here. Then as you can see, I put in an elbow. Uh, I drill the hole, put an elbow in here, and then uh, put a line. Now, be careful about the tubing you buy. Um, this is gonna work, but um, it, 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 it's a tubing that if you unroll it, it's still curly. So uh, it, it, it's not straight. So I had to actually heat that up to try to straighten it out as best as I can. Now the reason why I put this piece of wood in here is I wanted to space it up, uh, up enough uh, so then this cap can freely float up and down. Now you don't want your tube so short that this cap can just uh, float away or, or come away. So you want your tube long enough to where it goes down inside that cap. So. So uh, this is set up now, and then also too, at the bottom here, I cut a series of slots as well. The way this is sitting on top of that, I, a lot of people put notches, but I, I, I continue the ring around the bottom, so I would not get this to fall off the edge or something like that. So, so there's my, uh, my uh, bell siphon, and then like I said, here's a sleeve that goes over that. You want to put that right on the edge there. Uh, so then that cap can move uh, freely up and down and then when you put your grow bed media around this um, This is obviously going to tighten in place be nice and firm and then you just want to periodically uh, Check all your siphons making sure that they're running good uh, now I'm going to focus on uh, connecting all the drains and What you want to do is obviously find your point of where you're going to drain to So and then you want to slope so what I did is I did a quarter inch drop from each bell siphon, and then I'll do another quarter inch drop out here, and then I'm gonna drain everything this way. So um, you just wanna make sure that you have a nice slope on all your drainage. Thanks a lot. Okay, now what I wanna do is uh, walk you through the uh, plumbing process. We're completely done with all the plumbing. Um, so if you could come over here and look at this. This is my sump pit. This is where all the water will be collected into the sump pit. Uh, and so um, as you can see I got my pump down there it's a 1026 gallon pump 
um, and it's pumping the water up into the fish tanks. Now, right now, um, I'm only going to be using one fish tank at the time, but I've got this set up to be able to use two fish tanks as uh, later on in the future. Now, that will probably require me to incorporate some more grow beds because obviously those are your biofilters to uh, clean the water for the fish. But right now, I'm just going to use one. Um, as you can see, I've got shutoffs right here, so I can actually shut off one side and then use the other, or I can actually shut off both. But and then uh, down here, I've drilled a series of holes, so so it will actually spray down into the water and cause kind of a natural aeration process um, for for the fish. Now I am going to aerate as well because uh, you could never use get enough oxygen. Oxygen is great for the fish, so I am actually going to use aeration as well. So um, I've got a, a, like a little commercial grade aerator uh, that I will be utilizing in here as well. Now, one thing I want to show over here too, and I'll show you the other end. Um, in Honduras, we get a lot of rain. So uh, what I did is I uh, have an overflow right here. So if it rains into the system, that's great. Um, but it will overflow into the sump pit, and then it will actually run down this tube. And then that tube just gets drained out underneath the grow bed. So, uh, you know... Uh, just kind of preventing any potential issue that may occur um, with downpours. We get uh, just massive downpours here in Honduras. Okay, now, uh, so now that we've got the water in the fish tanks um, over here, as you can see, I tied in at the bottom of the actual fish tanks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a tube in on the other side. It's going to be perforated. It's going to have a series of holes. So the pressure of the water is not only going to push the pressure uh, or the water into these pipes, but also it will uh, push the solid waste as well. Um, so that's why I put the actual drainage at the bottom. Now, here, please forgive me, the, it's not very straight. Uh, I, as you can see, I draw and, and glue as my black lines, but somewhere I didn't uh, line it up perfectly. So, uh, But the reason why I did this is because this right here dictates the level of water in this tank right here. So uh, if you get a, a, a system that just shuts down, you've got to have it in such a way where that water will not drain out. So if the system shuts down, um, uh, my water level in my fish tanks will never ever go down below this. So that's, that's kind of like your safety net right there. Now one thing that I'm going to do is um, I have a backup battery system for my aeration. But as far as my water pumps, I do not have a backup battery system for that as far as to pump the water through the system. Um, but I do have a backup system for my aeration. Now over here, um, and, and I'll explain this in a, in a minute, um, uh, I'll come back to that. But over here is uh, my solids collector. Uh, you know, initially you're going to want some solids going into your grow beds and that's something you want to monitor and manage because obviously that will help mature your grow beds. So I'm not going to uh, really get very crazy on this, but I want to show them inside here. Um, I'm not going to get crazy on it yet. I'm going to just kind of let it be. Uh, I'm going to let the solids go into the grow beds as they can. But as you see, I've got a swirl filter in here where uh, the water will enter in and it will actually swirl in and then the solids can fall to the bottom. But if some solids come up into the grow beds, that is okay right now. Now then, I've got it obviously draining into the grow beds now. Now the thing of it is, is uh, and, and I'm sure many of you know this, uh, uh, you want a slope on all your piping. So that's why this grow bed, everything was set up exactly the way it is. So everything has a slope. So this has a, 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 a quarter inch slope drop um, as it goes down. Now, um, over here, I just kind of put like a potential clean out so I can examine. If I feel like I'm getting any uh, clogs or anything like that, I can actually pull that pipe off and look down, this, uh, down the system. Now, I do glue, uh, glue my uh, system together. A lot of people say they don't use glue, but I do. I glued everything together. Now, as you can see, I put spigots here. Uh, so the water is going to come out here and then water is going to drain over here. You, you don't want like the water dispensing here and your drains here. Then you won't get a constant consistent flow over there. So I put a, in a diagonal fashion so the whole entire grow bed is going to get movement of water. So as you can see every grow bed 
has water being dispensed down it. I put valves on every one of them because I want to be able to adjust and watch uh, how the grow beds go uh, fill up and how they dispense. And I want to do that evenly so I'll be able to uh, adjust those valves as needed. So, and then as you can see underneath here, um, you know, I everything slopes properly underneath the grow bed. So you can see all my plumbing and piping under there. Um, now under my, uh, uh, my bell siphons, they say that you want an extension pipe at least 12 inches to 24 inches. That gives it a nice good uh, suction uh, and, and so it can actually siphon out of the grow bed. So um, it, it's not recommended to just immediately drop it out of the grow bed. Uh, you, you want an extension tube. So that's the way I designed that. Uh, and then like I said, everything has a quarter inch slope. So it's gonna slope all back to the sump. Now before we go back over the sump, I wanna show you here, um, what I did is the overflow will drain out, so it's not going to drain out like around where I walk and stuff, um, but it's going to drain out right here if there's a, a huge overflow. Then also I have a valve over here for maintenance. If I feel like if I feel like I got too much um, solids uh, developing inside my containers, then what I can do is I actually can shut this off over here, and then I actually can turn it on there, and I can actually drain my tanks if I have to, and I can clean them. So. And then as you can see, it, it pipes back over here, back into the sump pit, and then it just gets processed right back into the fish tanks, and then goes back into